After a nice long break, I'm officially back to traveling the world. Except this time I didn't actually have to go that far. I'm not all the way in cold Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia. Instead, I'm in warm San Juan, Puerto Rico, where it is 85 degrees in January. Some might even call it too hot. I'm joined this trip by my lovely mother, Sarah, who is waving at the camera. Got some coffee at whatever it is, Quattro, Sombr Quattro Sombras, which I'm pretty sure it means Four Shadows. And we're gonna go look around. Our first stop is the courthouse in San Juan. So Puerto Rico is actually interesting because even though it is part of the United States, it is not a state, which is actually a matter of some controversy. Um, they're an unincorporated territory, however, they're actually unique in their designation among unincorporated territories because they are one of, they, excuse me, they are the only territory that has a federal district court. So even though it's technically not part of the federal government, it has its own federal court and U.S. law still applies here. <laughs> Things you do not see in many American cities. Roosters on the street. Nor do you see very old walls, and that is because San Juan is actually one of the oldest cities in North America. It was founded in 1521, which means only Panama City and uh, Santo Domingo, I'm pretty sure, are older than it. So this wall could have been here since all the way back in the 16th century, or even the 15th century. Then here is the tourism office for Puerto Rico in a building that was built in, looks like 1837. Oh, apparently we're going in. This part of the city is called Old San Juan, or Viejo San Juan in Spanish. Uh, and it should come as no surprise then that this is actually the oldest part of the city. Uh, if you look at a map of the whole island, there's this little peninsula. And that's where Old San Juan is. That was the part that was initially settled, which is why you have all these battlements, which were of course meant to protect like, from other major world powers who were trying to conquer the new world. So San Juan. Puerto Rico in general was first colonized by the Spanish, but throughout its history there were a couple of attempts by both the British and the Dutch to take over this incredible port so they could use it for their own Atlantic trade. This here is the bay that everyone would have wanted. It's all the way down to the ports over there and it's very well protected so you can see there's a peninsula that comes out to there this part of it so it creates a natural bay where the mouth of it is pretty small compared to the overall size so you could bring ships in into port and then defend them from these two peninsulas no so this was part of the city walls so if we look here we see the city walls up there is the actual castle that was used to defend the bay. When you picture New World colonialism, this is definitely what you picture. The Spanish architecture, big walls, and then beautiful clear water. Every walled city needs a gate, so this was the gate. 
San Juan since likely as early as 1540. And just like that, we have invaded San Juan. And there's the gate, and undoubtedly would have had some cannons or gunmen here to attack any would-be invaders. There, you get some of the multicolored houses in San Juan. Up ahead of us is the dreaded Castillo San Felipe del Moro, otherwise just called El Moro, which was the fort that was meant to protect the bay. It was from there that Sir Francis Drake was shelled, preventing him from conquering San Juan for the British back in the 15, late 1500s. So we're going to go check that out. short walk, we've reached the battlements of El Muro. Legend has it, there are dragons that defend the castle. Here they are. Here we are in the courtyard of Amuro. Up there, you can see three flags. On the far right is, of course, Star Spangled Banner, flag of the United States. In the middle, the flag of Puerto Rico. And on the left, the Burgundy Cross, which was the sign of, excuse me, the flag of the Spanish colonies. So. Outside of the inner keep, you of course have the walls where you can fire out onto ships. Old cannon there to demonstrate how they're doing that. And then on top of the keep, you have what I assume to be a watchtower or maybe a lighthouse. And here you have the defenders of the fort, i.e. other tourists like myself. It is of course imperative if you have multi-level fortifications, that your soldiers have a way to get from one level to the other. So this was the way to do it in El Moro. Hewn right into the wall itself. And at the end of the staircase is the main firing battery. One feature to note of this fort is that between the levels are mostly ramps rather than stairs. And that's because you can't push a cannon upstairs. A lot of Puerto Rico's modern history is as a colonial possession. Uh, so obviously, for most of that period, 
It was a Spanish possession. And it was part of their trade routes in the New World. But in 1898, Spain and America fought a war. And America won pretty handily. We ended up taking over a lot of Spain's possessions, including the Philippines and, of course, Puerto Rico. Now, some of the countries and areas we took over were granted their independence, but Puerto Rico continues on as a essentially colonial possession, not to get political or anything. Now, personally, I, like 52% of Puerto Ricans, think that Puerto Rico should be admitted as the 51st state in the Union. But for a lot of uh, reasons beyond the control of the Puerto Ricans, that is not likely to happen for some time, unfortunately. And at this point, we have reached, I believe, the lowest level. As you look out through barred windows. That was El Moro. Okay, and we saw we conquered, unlike the English or the Dutch at the turn of the whatever, 16th century. All in all, it's a definite recommend. It's one of the cooler, I don't know what to really to call it, ports that I've seen, so check it out. Now this right here is a level of unsafe usually get in the continental U.S., so it's kind of fun. Nothing to prevent you from falling as you look out on this lovely graveyard. And mausoleum, I guess, in the middle. Just across from the fort, it's a nice little plaza. Celebrating, oh, the 500th anniversary of the establishment. Puerto Rico, I guess that would have been last year. Still have the signs up. That there was the church of San Jose built in that classic Spanish mission style. So now we're gonna look for somewhere in the shade to have a little bite to eat and a drink because it's hot. Courtyard of the Museum of the Americas, Museo de las Americas. People say I don't know Spanish. Can you believe it? So it's the museum, White House Museum, which is the family home, or the former family home, of Ponce de Leon. Famous for his funny name, and for being the first governor of San Juan in Puerto Rico. Now at least supposedly, We're supposed to pay some sort of admission fee, but no one's asking for it, so go figure. Nice little seaside villa, though, for Ponce de Leon. Oh, stray cat, lots of those around. It paid to be a conquering Spaniard. If any of you played Assassin's Creed Black Flag, the vibes are immaculate. In addition to the rooster we saw earlier, there are also a lot of stray cats. 
around. That one looks a little dead. It's very. Yeah, I saw that one. Afraid that one might be dead. But this one looks alive, I hope. Now, when the initial uh, Spanish colonizers came, Beyonce was probably not bumping in the club, but aside from that, this looks to be fairly authentic, I'm just, I'm just including Spanish mission style church. The colorful buildings and looks like the Virgin Mary holding Jesus Christ. St. Sebastian looks a little bit like Sylvester Stallone in this. Uh, I don't exactly know what I've stumbled onto here. Something about the nation of Puerto Rico. Uh, Whoa, this is a historical house. It's where the pina colada was invented. Can you believe it? One of the most important drinks in all of the world. I believe this is the old U.S. Navy building. However, at the moment, it appears to be in the process of being renovated. So, we are unable to go inside. As you can see, they got the little eagle, some ships in there. And then as we walk farther down, we should end up at the U.S. Coast Guard base that's actually currently active, and I saw some U.S. Coast Guard, uh, or what do you call them, sailors, I suppose, uh, not too long ago, so. What I'm trying to figure out now is whether this is a reference to the French Revolution, Saint Just, or not. I'd be a bit surprised since he was kind of a bloodthirsty maniac, but he was a revolutionary, so. 
could be Puerto Rico is uh, paying some homage to him. First things first, tons of cats again. There's cats everywhere. Second of all, that's La Fortaleza, which is where the governor of Puerto Rico lives. But I'm actually pretty entranced by all these cats. So they're just everywhere. Never seen more cats in my life. Ooh. Walking along the city walls, you can again up there see El Muro and the mouth of the bay. In addition to a bunch of cats, which actually I can't see any right now, but just believe me, there are more cats than there's one up there. There are more cats than you've ever seen before. Overall, Old San Juan, it's one of the most beautiful cities or parts of a city I've ever seen. I think it easily rivals Vienna. Estonia, Tallinn. It's, uh, it's different, but I mean, how can you beat this?